Hey, how's it going? It's Sovereign. Welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. Today, we're talking about the information that BeHoYo just released about the Lantern Rite events and all the rewards, everything that comes with that. Basically, all the meat and potatoes in 1.3, we finally got information about it, and it's about to go down, like within the next few days. So you're going to want to stick around to get all those details. Also, the rewards looking pretty spicy. We got Hero's Wit, Mora, Fates... Tons of Prima Gems, lots to talk about today. If you guys like videos like this, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the future videos I come out with about Genshin Impact. Tons of stuff coming up, possible Venti return. Rosaria might be on that banner. That's gonna be in a future video. So stick around for those. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. So if you don't like to read, I'm gonna go ahead and get through all this for you. And then we're gonna basically summarize it all. Let's go. Lantern Rite gameplay details. On the day of the first full moon each year, the people of Liyue celebrate Lantern Rite at nighttime. Everyone in Liyue releases Shao lanterns and the Ming Shao lantern into the bright night sky. You and Paimon arrive in Liyue as a festival is in full swing, preparing to enjoy yourselves. The Lantern Rite is about to begin. During the event period, travelers can claim a four-star Liyue character of their choice in the Stand By Me. Complete the challenges in Theater Mechanicus to obtain Peace Talismans, which can be spent in the Shao Market on rewards including Crown of Insight, we need those for talents, and new name card style Celebration Lantern Light. That's great. There's a crown in this event. I have three. I need more. I'm sure people have more, and everybody needs more. Everybody needs more of these. They're so far and few between. We usually only get them during events. So make sure you at least get it for this so you can crown someone. I need, I have three. I only have enough for Shao. I'm going to build somebody else to 90 and, you know, put it might be Shin. And it's not going to be Shin Yan. But you know what? That's beyond the point. Let's continue. So your eligibility must meet the following conditions Adventure Rake 23 or above. Anybody can do that, even in the first day, I feel like, or maybe first two days. So if you haven't ever started playing Genshin Impact yet, you don't even have it downloaded, just download it, and then, you know, in the next few days, you're going to be able to do these events. Golden. Easy. Not hard to do at all. Complete Chapter 1, Act 1 of The Land Amidst Monoliths. Complete Shao Story Quest. Oh. Alatas Chapter. Alatas Chapter. Ala, 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 alatas, alatas, alatas Chapter. Event Duration. Event gameplay duration is the 10th of February until the 28th of February. The 10th to the 28th. So you have some time. So if you're not eligible yet, you have some time to get eligible. So do that. We have some time. It's going to be like a week and a half, two weeks long. I don't know exactly. I'm not a magician, or a witch, a warlock. I don't have magic, and I also don't have a calendar in front of me, okay? And math is not something I plan on doing this very second. Moving forward, all that glitters duration, the origin of the Lanterns quest starts on the 10th, ends on the 28th. Currents deep beneath the Lanterns quest starts on the 14th, goes to the 28th. Light upon the sea quest starts on the 18th, goes to the 28th. So they all end on the same day, but they all start on different days. A few days apart. It looks like four days apart from each other. Stand by me duration. Stand by me. Stand by me duration is the 10th to the 7th of March. So that goes on for quite a while. Theater Mechanicus duration is from the 10th to the 28th. So that one is the norm that we've been seeing the trend here. Everything ending on the 28th minus the stand by me duration. Um, so we're seeing a, you know, this isn't going to be permanent yet, which if it turns out to be a very fun game mode, I hope that it becomes permanent down the road, but we'll have to see. We don't know if it's going to be good yet. I just, I just know I like tower defense. A lot of other people do as well. So I think I'm going to be biased. So I want to know what someone thinks that isn't normally a fan of tower defense or maybe hasn't played a tower defense ever and what they think about this. Um, if you're one of those people, leave a comment down below. I'd like to know. I'd like to know your before and after thoughts of this game mode when it releases. All right. The Shao Market duration has three different stages. Uh, the Shao Market has three different stages, I should say. The duration is for stage one, the 10th to the 7th of March. Stage two is the 14th to the 7th of March. And the stage three is the 18th 
starting, I mean, until the 7th of March. So these are following the same release dates as the quests. The All That Glitters quests. Um, some notes here. No original resin is required to take part in this event, which is amazing. So they added, like I said before in the intro, they added an item, which we'll talk about a little bit later, that you can craft to do this and partake in these events. Event descriptions. The Lantern Rite event is divided into four sections. All that glitters, Lantern Rite Tales, Theater Mechanicus, and the Shao Market. Now let us introduce you to their content. All that glitters. During the Lantern Rite period, complete Shao's story quest. Alatus chapter. Alatus. 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 Chapter to unlock all that glitters quest. So you have to do one to unlock the next se sequence. Makes sense. That's probably obvious to most people. The All That Glitter storyline is split into three acts. The origin of the lanterns, currents deep beneath the lanterns, and light upon the sea. Complete the storyline to obtain primal gems, heroes with more and other rewards. Mmm, oh yeah, and that's what I like to hear. That's all I need. Primal gems, heroes, weed, and more. Some more, more. Small note, only those who have completed the relevant All That Glitters quest will be able to unlock the later parts of the Lantern Rite event and their gameplay modes. So you gotta do that All That Glitters quest. Do it, just do it. Day one when it comes out, do it. Do everything as it happens, as it releases, and you'll be fine. You have nothing to worry about, nothing at all. All right, the Lantern Rite Tales. After completing the origin of the lanterns, travelers will unlock Lantern Rite Tales. Travelers can accept requests from the citizenry that's a weird word. I have never said that in my life. Travelers can accept requests from Citizenry in the Lantern Rite Tales. Each completed request awards Primo Gems, Mora, and Festive Fever. Guys, look, we're getting 30 Primo Gems from these requests. Mmm, yes! And look, this is 200k Primo... No, I can't count. That's 20k. But 20k is still great! Great, yes! Lantern Rite Tales is split into three... Parts, collect Festa Fever and complete the relevant All That Glitters quest to unlock later parts of the Lantern Rite Tales and the corresponding quests. Travelers can check their progress through Lantern Rite Tales via the event page. This is the event page. These are your requests here. You can see a request all over here. There's plenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine there. And if we're getting 30 Primo Gems per request, money um a one small note here once the event ends on the 28th of february you will be unable to complete more requests so please complete them in time please festive fever during the event travelers can complete requests in lantern right tales to obtain festive fever and this is what it will look like festive fever ba -da -da -da. i said a quest festive fever <coughs> You want to dance with me? Festive mood during Lantern Rite. Perhaps the atmosphere on the day of the rite will be better the higher the festive fever is. Uh, festive fever. Hey, festive fever. All right, festive fever has three stages. We've only just begun. Guests flock from the afar and glow of a thousand lanterns. Travelers can check their current cumulative total and stage of festive fever at the Lantern Rite event page here and this is probably your fester fever meter so get used to this you're probably going to be looking at this a lot as you complete tasks and events and everything during the event once festive fever reaches a certain amount and the relevant all that glitters quests have been completed you can progress or progress to the next stage of the lantern right unlocking new lantern right tales and theater mechanicus sections in the process a theater Mechanicus, here it is. This is what everybody wants to know about. The Tower Defense game coming to Genshin Impact. I don't know how I made that work, but it worked. All right. Theater Mechanicus. Region. Region. From Liyue. Harbor has invented a new tabletop game known as Theater Mechanicus. Oh, this is a tabletop game? What, bro? It looks like you're like right in there on top. Anyways, travelers who complete the origin of the lanterns and Liyue Theater Mechanicus can now unlock the Theater Mechanicus challenge. Travelers can check the relevant quest in the Theater Mechanicus event page. Each completed request will award you with with will award you will a certain number. I think that's supposed to be with will award you with a certain number of peace talismans, which can then be 
used in the Xiao market to exchange for rewards. It also looks like there's going to be different stages or different difficulties of completion to get more rewards or peace talismans from each run. Travelers can go to Ryujin and Liwei Harbor to play the game each time you take part in the Theater Mechanicus, regardless of whether you succeed in completing the challenge or not. You will have to expand one Shao Lantern, so you have to get those lanterns if you want to play. You need to use them because whether you win or lose, you're not getting your money back. You hear? That's basically what they're saying. There are no refunds. All right. They don't care if you have a receipt. You're just not getting it. Travelers can attempt the challenge in either single player or co-op mode, but the co-op only supports two people at once. So basically you and someone else, if you want to do co-op, it doesn't support four people. That's where you're at. That's where you're stuck at. But look, just playing with someone else could be fun too. You know, it'd be really nice to go into someone else's world and play with them where they come into your world and you play with them. More co-op things is better. I think they need to expand on the co-op experience in this game because it has a it has a lot of potential. It's very limited at the moment. The objective of Theater Mechanics is to use various strategies to withstand monster attacks. Each stage will be divided up into several waves. During these waves, monsters will emerge from purple portals and follow predetermined paths to head towards the blue portals and thus escape the stage. So one way, one in, one out, and they follow that path to get to the destination, just like a regular tower defense game. Travelers can construct various mechan mechanicae, mechanica, mechanici, 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 mechanici. <laughs> Travelers can construct various mechanicae at predetermined positions and use them to deal damage to monsters and prevent their ingress. So this is a nice preview of what it's going to look like with your HUD and then the towers that you can put down. Awesome. I'm interested. You got me hooked already. I'm going to spend a lot of time doing this if all I got to do is craft item to play this. That's what we're doing. Monsters will not attack characters in a stage. And the characters cannot deal damage to monsters. All right? So this isn't about you and the monsters and fighting. All right? You can't hurt each other. So stop it. Don't even try gain energy or use elemental bursts so you can't do that this is like you're not fighting right no combat like that instead skillful use of mechanicae and the environment is key to victorious in the theater mechanicus so focus on the strategy of the game the theater mechanicus game not the genshin impact game you, you know what i mean you know what i mean the challenge shall be considered a success if the number of monsters that escape does not exceed that which is stated in the given requirements. If that number is exceeded, you will fail the challenge, and this will immediately end the stage. When the challenge ends, you will receive a certain number of Venica sigils as a reward based on the finalization rules of that stage. Venica sigils can be used to unlock and upgrade Mechanicae. So you need more of these. You need to do good so you can get more of these to do better. That's pretty much what they said. So do more, do better, be stronger, get more reward. <laughs> Progressing through the stages of Festive Fever unlocks new stages, new Mechanicae, higher upgrade levels, and increased difficulty levels. And obviously, the more difficult it is, the more rewards you get. But for more information, please see Theater Mechanicus gameplay details, and I will leave, leave the link to this page in the description box so that way you guys can go check it out yourself if you want more information. All right, now let's talk about Shao Lanterns. You will need Shao Lanterns to complete Lantern Rite Tales, Request, and Theater Mechanicus challenges. So how can these Shao Lanterns be made? Complete the Origin of the Lanterns quest, and you will be able to learn the method of crafting Shao Lanterns from Jingming, of Liyue Harbor. And this is where Jingming is, right here. Bop, 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 right there. That's where you go. The following materials are needed to craft a Shao Lantern. So you're gonna need these materials to craft it. Lantern fiber, obtained from harvestable plants. Wick material, obtained from helicurl type enemies and Fatui elites. A plasturite shard obtained from harvestable ores, geofishup hatchlings, geofishups, and stonehide lava, curl, lava turtles. So, pretty much, if you just farm normally and just smash mobs in the open world a lot and farm things, you're going to be able to get a ton of these. I probably will help you guys with a guide um, coming out very soon. 
very soon, probably as soon as this launches, that'll be one of my first priorities to get a guide for you guys how to farm these the quickest way so that way you can make a ton of lanterns and just play as much as you want of that theater mechanicus. Look out for that video. Possibly subscribe, subscribe and turn on notifications so that way you don't miss it. All right. So what it takes to craft this, you're gonna need, looks like one of each of the materials. Pretty simple. Um, I wonder what the drop rate is going to be. They are blue items though. So it, it might be a little hard. Maybe if you're like AR45 and above, they might drop for you, no problem. If you're not, it could be a little bit harder. I'm not sure. We'll see. After collecting enough ingredients, travelers can go to the crafting benches to construct Shao Lanterns. And thus is a lovely Shao Lantern made. Just like that. Take three three stars and make a four star. All right, stand by me. This is the character selection where you get one of these three four stars. Up to you. We, we are going to have a video about that, about how to choose, who to choose, and who's the best option for you. Also check that out soon on the channel. Once Festive Fever has reached glow of a thousand lanterns, travelers can use 1,000 piece talismans in Stand By Me to invite one of Liu Wei's four star characters to join your party. Remember, you can only send one such invite. You can only have one, just one. Your options are Shang Ling, Xin Yan, Beidou, Ning Guang, Xingqiu, and Chong Yun. All great four stars. And we can go into details about that later. But you can choose. They're all great. They're all great. All right. The Shao Market. Let's talk about what is in the Shao Market and what, what can you get that has a lot of value and why you should be playing this event. The Shao Market will be divided into three segments that will open on the first, fifth, and ninth day of the event, respectively. So stage one, stage two, stage three, first, fifth, ninth. Bada bing, bada day of the event, respectively. <laughs> Travelers can use peace talismans in the shout market to exchange for various rewards, including the name card style, celebration, lantern, light, character enchantment materials, heroes, wit, mystic enchantment ores, talent level up materials, the crown of insight, and more. We need that crown. We need that right there. Need it. We also need this and this, and we need some of those. We really need some of these, actually. So as you can see here, these rewards are pretty good. Depending on how many heroes wit they give us here, it could be either good or it could be fantastic. If they give us six, okay, I'm liking it. If they give us 12, yes, that's what I want to see. I want to see a stack of 12 here, not six. But if it's only like a stack of three, you know what, Mihuel, we need to have a conversation. All right. Getting four-star talent books is very important. Xiao uses these. I could use these for sure. That would be fantastic. And Mora. We always need more Mora. We always need some Mora. All right. So there it is, everybody. All of the events that are going on basically until the end of the month, some just slightly after into March. But the Lantern Rite event has tons of rewards, Prima Gems, Heroes Wit, Mora, Enchantment Ores, everything you could think of. They have all of it. And not to mention the login rewards that are coming out as well. I don't think that it was on this page that they talk about the login rewards. So I will go over here and find them for you guys right here. So may fortune find you daily login events. This is starting on the 11th and going to the 26th. Within a seven day period, you're getting 10 free intertwined fates. These are fates that are used on the, the rate up banners for either characters or weapons. These are really important to have. I think these are way more valuable than the the acquaint fates um so make sure you're logging in just doing this at least so that way you can get 10 free you get you're getting a 10 pull right here for free so that's it for the details about 1.3 all that glitters all the festivities that are going on for this event let me know what you guys think in the comment section below if you guys want resource links they'll also be in the description box thanks for watching the video give it a thumbs up if you liked it and i'll see you guys in the next one